Nancy, I wanted to invite you to talk a little bit to talk a little bit about um, Ishmael Ali or Ali Muhammad Ali, um, his odyssey here in the United States and how he came to be here. So this film ends after the CC future and he's back home with his camels and his relationship with Mr. Golistrup, uh, the CEO of Clipper Shipping. That relationship continued on um, for several years, and through that process, uh, Mr. Ali became appointed the ed Director General of Education of the Republic of Somaliland, which is this um, semi-independent republic on the western side of Somalia. Um, it's relatively stable compared to the rest of Somalia, and relatively democratic. And um, his connections with Mr. Golistrup impressed the, the government there, and he actually was appointed the Director General of Education. And so for that, this was in October of 2010, he was appointed there, and he served in that post until April 2011, um, and was um, taking part in building schools and um, ref trying to institute educational reforms. And as part of that process, he received an invitation to come to not a conference on piracy, but a conference on education in the United States. Um, and he, he was invited in his capacity as Director General of Education um, and flew here in April 2011, where he was immediately met with by the FBI and arrested at Dulles Airport. Um, and as we can find out, there was no conference in education. It was an operation by the United States government to bring him here. In terms of the total cost of private armed security guards, coupled with um, with ship hardening equipment, um, that total figure comes up to about a billion dollars for the year 2011. And if you and, and if you, you know, to give you a sense of proportion, the total economic cost of piracy for 2011 that we calculated came up to roughly about seven billion U.S. dollars. At the end of 2014 is when a lot of the international naval mandates come to an end. So the EU's Operation Atlanta um, and NATO's Operation Ocean Shield um, will, will end, will expire. And so I think there's a lot of questions, a lot of big political decisions have to be made very soon. And the question is, will you see a lot of regional navies sort of stepping in? Already you have countries like China and India, but I mean, can they really step into the vacuum or will we see you know, more private armed security guards and more private maritime security companies stepping into the fray. The shipping industry will have to look after itself, and that is what it's doing. Um, two, the two most important steps that have been taken is one is called the, the best management practice, uh, where ships are actually uh, operating in a a much more professional way. And probably about 70 or 80 percent of the ships operating off Somalia are following best management practice. There's always going to be a minority who will not do it, can't afford to do it, or whatever. And a lot of the local small shipping, the Dow's, obviously just, just doesn't fit into this category. Secondly is the use of armed guards, which uh, probably at the moment, probably about 60 to 70 percent of ships, or the large ships are carrying armed guards but that percentage is probably tumbling down again uh, because, of, because of the cost. Uh, but you will need some element of naval force out there because if a ship is hijacked, the only way to get it back is to have a government vessel in the region that can undertake some sort of boarding which is able to go on board and rescue uh, those, uh, those sailors. And finally, if you're not prepared to go onto land in Somalia, uh, you have to pay ransom. With something over 50% of the, the ships now being armed, and the Russian, Chinese, and U.S. navies patrolling this, this area, the rate of success must have, must have plummeted for the pirates. Is it getting uh, noticeably lower, and is it more difficult to recruit pirates on uh, the... The number of attacks is down 60%. The number of attacks is down 60%. So the number of successful attacks is even lower than that. So I think I, I can never keep up the next exactly. I probably got 14 and they'll be held. I was, I was looking at numbers on the way here, and, um, and so in 2000, by one figure, you, you could, how you define piracy determines what counts as an attack. 
Rider 1 um, counts, there were 174 successful attacks in 2011 and 34 in 2012. So a drop of directly even more than 6%. I think I, I might be missing a connection. If the ship was under the flag of convenience of the Bahamas, the cargo on it belonged to a Danish company. How did the FBI get involved to come and arrest this, bring this gentleman to the United States to arrest him? Um, piracy has historically been the, 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 the it was historically the only universal jurisdiction crime. So by that, I mean a crime which any nation could prosecute as soon as they capture an individual suspected of it. After World War II, several more crimes developed into universal jurisdiction crimes, such as genocide, um, torture, and war crimes. Um, so in theory, any nation has jurisdiction under national law, criminal law, to prosecute, investigate and prosecute piracy as piracy. A complication of that is that piracy under international law also has to has to be an attack on the high seas, which it means water outside the territorial jurisdiction of any nation. Um, the CC Future was attacked outside the territory of any nation um, in the Gulf of Aden. However, Mr. Ali did, did not take part in any attack. Um, that's undisputed. It's have to be covered by what I say factually. Um, and so, one of the legal issues in his case is how is he being prosecuted by the United States authorities when he himself was not captured or did not go out onto international territory where any nation does have prosecutorial authority. And so we filed motions to dismiss for that very reason, that there was no jurisdiction, and um, they were successful at the district court and they're currently being reviewed by the D.C. Court of Appeals, the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. We actually expect a decision in the next two weeks or so.